Abena, did you do what I told you? Yes, I did, Jose. I told those closest to me that I was going to cohabit with Danzo in a remote village. Good. That should throw off the police if they come asking. Exactly. They're the ones most likely to be questioned about my whereabouts. Are you ready for this? As ready as I'll ever be. I just want to leave all of this behind. We'll make it through. Our ride should be at the pickup point soon. I can't believe we're actually doing this. Border jumping. Don't worry about it, you're in good hands. Just do as I say, the guys we are meeting are experienced in this and they have contacts at almost every border post and police roadblock in both countries. I trust you, Jose. It's the only way. Let's go, Aberna. Our new life awaits us across the border. Yes, let's go. Abena, don't forget about the next stage of the plan. We need Danso to play along. Right. I've got it covered. Danso will do whatever I ask him to. What's the story you're feeding him? I've told him I'm on a mission to make it big, and I need to lay low for a while. I promised him air tickets once I'm settled on a resort island. Smooth. And he bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. He's totally smitten with me. Do we really have to walk through this thick forest? Yes, the guys will pick us up a few miles from here. All right then. About that Danso guy, just make sure he keeps up the act. We can't afford any slip-ups. Trust me, I've got him wrapped around my finger. He'll do as I say. And no contact from him, right? Exactly. I'll be the one reaching out when the time's right. Smart move. Let's keep this momentum going. We're almost there. Wimala, you won't believe what Abena asked me to do yesterday. What's got you looking so puzzled, Danso? She wants me to lie to everyone, saying she's with me in the village, then suddenly switch it up, saying she moved out and is living alone. That sounds fishy. What's her angle? That's what I'm trying to figure out. And she's also talking about getting rich quick. I want to support her, but it all seems too rushed. Trust is key, my friend. Without it, everything falls apart. Exactly. And what if Aben is up to no good? What if something happens to her and I get dragged into some mess? You're right to be cautious. Maybe it's time to set some boundaries. I think I'll tell the truth if anyone asks about Abena's whereabouts. And I'm changing my number too. I don't want her family or the police bothering me. Wise move. But what about your feelings for her? I'm smitten, no doubt. But if she's playing games, I can't afford to be a pawn. Still, if she does strike it rich, I want to be there to share in the wealth. Just be careful, Danso. Love can blind us to the truth sometimes. Thanks, Wimala. I'll keep my eyes open from now on. Jose, can you believe we're finally here in Mesa, Marrakesh? It's incredible, isn't it? The sights, the sounds, everything. I still can't believe we pulled it off. Fooling everyone back in Pallavi, even my own mother. We make a good team, Abena. Yeah, we do. But you know, it just hit me. I don't really know you that well. What do you mean? I mean, you were just a customer at the restaurant. A flashy guy who left big tips. Fair point. But hey, we're in this together now. We'll get to know each other better along the way. I hope so. I just don't want any surprises. You won't get any from me, Abena. I'm here for you, every step of the way. I promised to take care of you, didn't I? Look at you, you look fine. Thank you, love. Let's go. Let me take you to my apartment. David, I noticed that you've been spending a lot of time at work lately, and we haven't had much time together as a couple. It's been bothering me. I'm sorry, Zura. I've been under a lot of pressure. As you are aware, my company is expanding and we are making new acquisitions, but you're right. I need to prioritize our relationship. I understand, David. Let's find a solution together. Maybe we can set aside some time each week for date nights or quality time together. That sounds like a great idea. I'll make sure to rearrange my schedule to make it happen. 
And let's also make sure to communicate openly about our feelings and needs, so we can address any issues before they become bigger problems. Agreed. Let's pray together for guidance and wisdom as we work through this. Heavenly Father, we come before you with open hearts, seeking your guidance and wisdom. Help us to prioritize our marriage and to always show love and respect to one another. Give us the strength to communicate openly and to find solutions to any challenges we may face. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. I already feel better knowing that we're working through this together. Me too, Zura. I love you. I love you too, David. Jose, I've been thinking. What's on your mind, Abena? Well, now that we're here in Mesa, Marrakesh, I can't help but wonder about our future. Don't worry, Abena. We'll figure it out together. It's just, I realize I don't know much about you. Like, what do you do for a living? Oh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. That doesn't really tell me much. Trust me, Abena, I take care of things. You don't need to worry about a thing. But I do worry. I left everything behind in Palavi. I need to start afresh. And we will, Abena. I'll take care of you, I promise. I hope so, Jose. I just want to know what our future holds. We'll figure it out, Abena. Together. Two weeks later. I wonder who is knocking at the door. I am busy preparing to go to church. I'm coming. Good morning, Ahana. Good morning, Mr. Amoa. What can I do for you? I've been trying to reach Abena on her phone, but it seems she's changed her number. Do you know where she is? Abena left about two weeks ago. She said she was moving in with her boyfriend, Danso. She didn't inform me about anything. She still owes me overdue rent. I'm sorry, Mr. Amoa. I don't know when she'll be back. This is unacceptable. Abena will never set foot here again. A few days later. Ahana, my wife and I have talked it over, and we've decided that you should start living alone in the back room. We hope you can afford the rent. I understand and I would be happy to live alone, Mr. and Mrs. Amoa. May the Lord's will be done. For as long as the Lord makes a way for me to pay the rent, I will be more than happy to stay there until I complete my studies. Yes, I am sure the Lord will make a way. Amen. Ahana continued to live alone in the back room until she finished her studies. Graduating with first class honors, she garnered awards as the top science student each year and clinched the title of best final year science student at Pallavi University. She went on to earn two more first class degrees, including a master's from a prestigious institution. Eventually, she launched a globally reaching business and married the man of her dreams, a Christian entrepreneur who happened to be a nine-figure millionaire. Jose, can you tell me more about what you do for a living? You've been quite vague about it. Oh, you know, I'm a businessman, Abena. I dabble in various ventures. But what kind of business exactly? Just some investments here and there, nothing too specific. That doesn't really answer my question, Jose. Trust me, Abena, it's better if you don't know all the details. A week later. I got hold of a list of Jose's passwords. Let me see what he's hiding. What's this? So, Jose is a fraudster. He's involved in internet fraud. He scams people. Oh my goodness, what have I gotten myself into? Jose. I need to talk to you. What's on your mind, Abena? I found out what you and your friends are really involved in. You're scammers, fraudsters who are involved in internet fraud, aren't you? Abena, I can explain. No, Jose, there's no excuse for what you're doing. I can't be with someone who's living a life of crime. You can't leave me, Abena. You know too much. I'm leaving, Jose. I won't be a part of this anymore. <laughs> You won't get away that easily, Abena. I am more than just a fraudster. I'm also an occultist. I am a member of the Legacy Brotherhood. Abena tries to flee while Jose wasn't looking but Jose catches her. Where do you think you're going, Abena? 
Let me go, Jose. I can't stay here anymore. You're not going anywhere. I am going to lock you up in the basement. No one will find you there. Jose, you can't keep me here forever. A few days later. Abena, you need to behave. Money's money, regardless of where it comes from. If I want to get out of here, I better play along. You're right, Jose. I'll behave. I understand now. Good. That's what I want to hear. I will release you today. I hope you won't give me any more problems or try to run away again. You know that you're my babe. I don't like keeping you locked up. A few months later, Abena secretly calls the police, providing them with Jose's location. Abena, where are you going? I'm just going out for some fresh air, Jose. I'll be back soon. Let me join you. No. Go ahead and finish your breakfast. Jose and aware of Abena's plan, lets her leave. Police officers arrive at Jose's location. Jose, you're under arrest for involvement in internet fraud and illegal confinement. What? How did you find me? We have our ways. If you must know, it seems one of your girlfriends tipped us off. The woman seemed to know a lot about you. Looks like she's not as loyal as you thought. Abena, I'll make her pay for this. Abena, watching from a distance as Jose is taken away. Goodbye, Jose. I won't let you control me anymore. Jose leverages his connections to secure his release from jail and erase his police record. Then he enlists thugs to track down Abina. Find her. I want her brought back to me within the next 48 hours. Yes, boss. We'll scour every corner of Mesa Marrakesh. She can't hide forever. Keep searching until you find her. Yes, boss. Let's find this girl, boss. I can't believe that Jose got out so fast. I need to stay one step ahead of him and his goons. If only my father was a good man, I wouldn't be in this situation. If my father hadn't hurt me those many years ago, my life would have turned out better than this. I will so deal with him as soon as I get a chance. For now, I need to continue to hide from Jose and his thugs. I have to find a way out of this. I can't let Jose or the police catch me. Abena, you can run, but you can't hide. I'll make sure you pay for betraying me. I won't let fear control me. I'll find a way to escape this nightmare. Thank you for watching this episode of Crossroads Odyssey. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, we encourage you to do so now. Subscribing ensures you'll be notified whenever we release new content. Additionally, we'd be grateful if you could like and share our videos. Your support is invaluable to us. In the end, Abina's tale serves as a cautionary reminder of the consequences of harboring resentment and refusing to forgive. Her journey, marked by deceit, betrayal, and risking imprisonment, stands in stark contrast to that of her cousin Zora, who embraced forgiveness and found happiness and success. While both faced similar challenges in childhood, their choices diverged drastically, leading to vastly different outcomes. Abina's refusal to let go of her anger not only led her down a path of self-destruction, but also caused harm to those around her. Blaming her father for her own decisions only perpetuated her cycle of suffering, leaving her trapped in a web of bitterness and regret. On the other hand, Zura's decision to forgive allowed her to break free from the chains of the past and build a life filled with love, fulfillment, and accomplishment. By choosing to follow the path of forgiveness, she not only healed herself but also became an inspiration to others. The lesson here is clear, forgiveness is not just a gift we give to others, but also a gift we give to ourselves. It liberates us from the burdens of anger and resentment, allowing us to move forward with clarity, peace, and joy. In the end, it is not our circumstances that define us, 
but the choices we make in response to them. Before we conclude, we would like to share the following verses with you. Kindly note that the verses were taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Ephesians 4.32 says, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Proverbs 17.9 says, He that covereth the transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth the matter separateth very friends. Matthew 6.14-15 says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Colossians 3.13 says, Forbearing one another, and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Matthew 18.21-22 says, Then came Peter to him, and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but, until seventy times seven. Hebrews 12 14 to 15 says, Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Luke 6 37 says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned, forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. 1 Corinthians 13, 4-5 says, Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity invieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. And 1 Peter 4, 8 says, And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, acknowledging the power of forgiveness and the importance of letting go of resentment and bitterness. Help us, Lord, to follow the example set by your Son Jesus Christ, who forgave even those who betrayed and crucified him. Grant us the strength to forgive others as you have forgiven us, recognizing that forgiveness is not weakness but a demonstration of your love and mercy. We pray for the wisdom to understand the consequences of holding on to grudges and the courage to release them, trusting in your divine plan for our lives. May we be guided by your Holy Spirit to choose the path of forgiveness and love, knowing that it leads to healing, reconciliation, and peace. As we reflect on the choices we make, May we always seek to embody the qualities of kindness, compassion, and charity towards one another. Guard our hearts against bitterness and resentment, and fill us instead with your boundless love and grace. In your mercy, Lord, grant us the grace to forgive as we have been forgiven, to love as you have loved us, and to walk in the freedom that comes from letting go of past hurts. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.